All right. So when we look at this, uh, this first question, what is a prime? And, you know, this idea that are there these areas of collaboration, uh, potentially with this diverse industry partnership engagement, that these technologies can come forward and that AFWorks, in conjunction with some of our other partners, could engage and advance that particular industry, an industry that initially we may, as we are right now, a, a relatively notable player with Agility Prime, uh, being able to provide some of those early contracts, being able to provide just the military airworthiness approach that allows us to do the expansion of that envelope. Uh, early stages, we, we pretty notable. In the end, we hope that we're a very small part of that market, that there is this, this fantastic commercial sector that's ready to go bring in the right workforce, that's able to bring in the manufacturing know-how to get economies of scale such that our taxpayers not only have the best military force available using a lot of these kind of mundane tasks, uh, not military specific tasks, doing those at, at the lowest cost, but at the same time, bringing forward technologies that have value to the commercial sector. And so as we look at that, are there some that have particular strategic importance for the US uh, and for our industrial sector? Places, it was noted in this last discussion, you know, where, where, where are the areas that need help? Um, and that's, that's where we, you know, if, it, if it's a fantastic market that's been moving along, uh, we certainly don't want to inject ourselves and slow it down in any form or fashion. And we don't necessarily want to spend the taxpayer's dollars uh, in those, if we can't get a relatively high return on investment uh, as, we're, as we feel like we're doing in Agility Prime, being able to invest some of our dollars in research, development, tests, and evaluation, but being able to also leverage significantly the commercial sector investment there. And the next question is whether or not the U.S. government can provide some of the financial or technical support to remove barriers. So what are the barriers that are out there? Are there cases where we might have, as the U.S. federal government, uh, in the Air Force in particular, but we've worked closely with our other government partners, uh, particular capabilities uh, that Maybe it's a, a, a type of testing. Sometimes it's a regulatory measure. Sometimes it's uh, the ability just to bring the right stakeholders together. So a variety of different potential options that would allow with a relatively small amount of money to the innovators that are there. Now that, is, there is there a risk of it being contested? Could this be a market uh, that's taken over relatively quickly? Uh, and, and leaves us without access, or as was discussed in one of the panels, uh, we had, you know, Peter, uh, PK, uh, Dana, we're talking about supply chain. Are, are there things that we need to do to make sure that we have a resilient supply chain? And then is there the potential for bef beneficial collaboration uh, between industry, between investors, between the interagency, and potentially between our international partners, where there are cases where you know, countries may not be in a position where they buy one of our large weapon systems, but where is there opportunity in international collaboration with our partners where we could begin collaborating on these types of technologies, establishing, uh, you know, a great foundation for moving forward in other areas. So what do these, cr these criteria look like? Uh, clear vision, making sure that there is, uh, you know, we have a, we have a clear path. We've d discussed in, in multiple occasions the idea that by 2023, we intend to field some flavor of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Are there good measurable in, uh, milestones that we can take there? To some degree, you know, it has to have something that, that will get the get some attention, something that, you know, maybe only the government can do. Is there a contested segment, sector where maybe there's a threat? Uh, is there a Sputnik moment potentially that's out there? Are there other uh, International market drivers that we need to be aware of, particularly if there's some flavor of adversarial movement in the private or government sectors. Is there a compelling military utility? You heard the discussion a little bit earlier today about our use cases that we're exploring. You know, we aren't, we are using taxpayer dollars for the Department of Defense. And so we do intend that there would be a military use for these vehicles, making sure that we are assessing what that use might be, making sure that it is an efficient approach to solving some of the problems that are out there. What is the quantifiable quantifiable impact you heard 
uh, our the same user panel at the beginning talk about some of the analytic approaches that we're using to identify are there some cost savings that we might be able to realize and then does it need you know the overall DOD investment thesis does it meet our national defense strategy next is there a commercial value proposition we as, as we said we want to make sure that AFWorks it is it is fundamentally looking at this massive segment of untouched technology by the government. Uh, if we're going to do that, then if we're nudging something along, it should have uh, some of that commercial sector appeal as well, uh, so that some of the DOD funding resources could be matched in kind uh, in some flavor, as you might have heard in the discussions with App Ventures on Tuesday. And then this idea that we are collaborating uh, with the investors. We, we look at ourselves as co-investors, and that co-investment could be not just in the early research, bringing these prototypes to flight. Uh, we see opportunity for doing that. And it's not just with, uh, you know, some of the venture capitalists or even private equity family offices, but potentially doing some of the co-investment as you've seen with state and local agencies as well. So that that could happen not just in the early stages, but maybe in some of the training, there's opportunity for co-investment. Maybe, uh, maybe we're even using the assets uh, in some cases, dual use of the assets. And then is there a conclusion? Can we really drive this to something meaningful in a meaningful amount of time? We've put kind of a two to four year range um, in order to be able to move at what we think are the commercial timescales on some of these dual use technologies of interest. And then the viable commercial exits. So what are the primes that we're looking at? We've talked clearly this week a lot about space, a uh, vast amount of investment in commercial space, a lot of potential there. Uh, and so we'll continue to explore that. We have all the, ex we have experts uh, that will go and introduce these. Uh, we'll have Brandon come back on here in just a moment, making sure you get the chance uh, to go where you want to go to explore these different potential primes. Autonomy, uh, certainly as we look at the Agility Prime effort, long-term flying massive numbers of these vehicles in urban areas. Eventually we're probably not going to want a pilot in all those locations. How do we accelerate autonomy? How could we create trust and autonomy. What is the real value proposition that DOD brings? And is there a notable business case, whether it be autonomy in the vehicle itself or potentially some flavor of autonomy that is more of an autonomy infrastructure? This is computers, sensing, comms on the edge uh, that, that are there in the field and providing some augmentation so that the autonomy can be even more effective. Microelectronics addressed uh, very strongly by Heather and for great reasons in the last investor panel. Uh, what does that microelectronic investment look like? This is one that's been tried many times. Uh, if we're going to do these, and I'll say this, uh, you know, these are broad, these are enormous words that we're throwing out here. And so the reason we're doing this right now is we want feedback from you. We want feedback from the investors, we want feedback from industry. We want feedback from the warfighter to understand where these are. So what is it that we can do in microelectronics uh, that is new, different, and notably beneficial to solving this challenge that we have with microelectronics as it touches so many things. With energy, one of the greatest challenges that we have in our area of operations is making sure that we have a way of getting in literally fossil fuel there. How do we, how do we close that logistics chain that ensures that we have the energy there. Are there new approaches that would allow more distributed use of energy? Uh, all flavors of novel concepts, uh, fantastic opportunities for partnering. Uh, you'll see tomorrow we have our National Renewable Energy Lab. The director will be on with us. Good uh, work with the Department of Energy that we've been able to do. And clearly that is a, a place of all flavors of innovation. Next, this one is a little more complicated. We say game primer, digital engineering. This is the idea that there have been phenomenal improvements in software that allow us to do gaming. Why do we do gaming? For design. And that design could be just for some small components. Eventually for a system itself, we've heard a lot about the digital twin. Uh, eventually building that up and growing that into a larger architecture or system of systems that allow us to really play out what does the full operation look like and so this entire digital thread uh, from that smallest component to these larger operations how can we leverage software that's available now and then this last this idea of quite supersonics you can see 
some fantastic companies that are out there pushing the edge of what's possible in supersonics. Uh, you know, we pay tribute this week to General Chuck Yeager, uh, our first airman who went faster than the speed of sound. Impressive now that we're finding ways of doing that without actually creating that sonic boom, potentially opening up a new commercial sector, allowing you to get from one place to another in a different flavor of transportation. So looking to improve national security through a prime, what does that look like? We want your feedback. You're gonna to hear tomorrow, uh, General Pringle from the Air Force Research Lab will kick off at noon tomorrow. We'll be talking to several different leaders across these different areas. And then we'll have this design a prime workshop. This is gonna be fun. I think you're going to enjoy this opportunity to do this crowdsourcing and to see what the other ideas are out there. How can we get some novel concepts faster than we might've been able to do uh, sitting in that, that Pentagon uh, that we showed you at the beginning. We, we were looking to expand that network of innovators. We're expecting you to be that network of innovators.